Did you like that picture? Like, picture? <laughs> I think in this particular time in our history, uh, we need the truth and uh, we need the, the power of the soul and to realize that it's all one soul uh, and one love. Uh, let's see, shall we introduce ourselves? This is the, the noted Robin Rule. The obscure Mike Adair. The, the, the noted <laughs> Michael Adair. The uh, uh, frequently uh, soft noted W.J. Ray. The very much admired and noted Mary Norbert Corta. And the widely noted <laughs> Dan Roberts. <laughs> I celebrate myself, and what I assume, you shall assume. For every atom belonging to me, as good belongs to you. I loaf and invite my soul. I lean and loaf at my ease, observing a spear of summer grass. Houses and rooms are full of perfumes. The shelves are crowded with perfumes. I breathe the fragrance myself and know it and like it. The distillation would intoxicate me also, but I shall not let it. The atmosphere is not a perfume. It has no sense of the distillation. It is odorless. It is for my mouth forever. I am in love with it. I will go to the bank by the wood and become undisguised and naked I am mad for it to be in contact with me. The smoke of my own breath echoes, ripples, and buzzed whispers, love root and silk thread, crutch and vine, my respiration and inspiration, the beating of my heart, the passing of blood and air through my lungs, the sniff of green leaves and dry leaves, and of the shore and dark colored sea rocks, and of hay in the barn, the sound of the belched words of my voice, words loosed to the eddies of the wind, a few light kisses, a few embraces, a reaching around of arms, the play of shine and shade on the trees as the supple boughs wag, the delight alone, or in the rush of the streets, or along the fields and hillsides, the feeling of health the full moon trill, the song of me rising from bed and meeting the sun. Have you reckoned a thousand acres much? Have you reckoned the earth much? Have you practiced so long to learn to read? Have you felt so proud to get at the meaning of poems? Stop this day and night with me, and you shall possess the origin of all poems. You shall possess the good of the earth and sun. There are millions of suns left. You shall no longer take things at second or third hand, nor look through the eyes of the dead, nor feed on the specters and books. You shall not look through my eyes either, nor take things from me. You shall listen to all sides and filter them from yourself. Three. I have heard what the talkers were talking, the talk of the beginning and the end, but I do not talk of the beginning or the end. There was never any more inception than there is now, nor any more youth or age than there is now, and will never be any more perfection than there is now, nor any more heaven or hell than there is now. Urge and urge and urge, always the procreant urge of the world. Out of the dimness, opposite equals advance. Always substance and increase. Always a knit of identity. Always distinction. Always a breed of life. To elaborate is no avail. 
learned and unlearned feel that it is so. Sure as the most certain sure, plumb in the uprights, well entreated, braced in the beam, stout as a horse, affectionate, haughty, electrical. I and this mystery, here we stand. Clear and sweet is my soul, and clear and sweet is all that is not my soul. Lack one, lacks both, and the unseen is proved by the seen, till that becomes unseen and receives proof in its turn. Showing the best and dividing it from the worst, age vexes age. Knowing the perfect fitness and equanimity of things, while they discuss, I am silent, and go bathe and admire myself. <laughs> Welcome is every organ and attribute of me, and of, every, and of any man, hearty and clean. Not an inch, nor a particle of an inch, is vile, and none shall be less familiar than the rest. I am satisfied. I see, dance, laugh. Sing, as God comes a loving bedfellow and sleeps at my side all night and close on the peep of the day and leaves for me baskets covered with white towels bulging the house with their plenty, shall I postpone my acceptation and realization and scream at my eyes that they turn from gazing after and down the road and forthwith cipher and show me to assent? Exactly the contents of one, and exactly the contents of two, and which is ahead? Four. Trippers and askers surround me, people I meet, the effect upon me of my early life, of the ward and city I live in, of the nation, the latest news, discoveries, inventions, societies, authors old and new, my dinner, dress, associates, looks, business, compliments, dues, the real or fancied indifference of some man or woman I love, the sickness of one of my folks or of myself or ill-doing or loss or lack of money or depressions or exaltations. They come to me days and nights and go for me again, but they are not the me myself. Apart from the pulling and hauling stands what I am, stands amused, complacent, compassionating, idle, unitary, looks down is erect, bends an arm on an impalpable certain rest, looks with its side curved head curious what will come next, both in and out of the game and watching and wondering at it. Backward I see in my own days where I sweated through fog with linguists and contenders. I have no mockings or arguments. I witness and wait. Five, I believe in you, my soul. The other I am must not abase itself to you and you must not be abased to the other. Loaf with me on the grass, loose the stop from your throat, not words, not music or rhyme I want, not custom or lecture, not even the best, only the lull I like, the hum of your valved voice. I mind how we lay in June, such a transparent summer morning. You settled your head athwart my hips and gently turned over upon me and parted the shirt from my bosom bone and plunged your tongue to my bare stripped heart and reached till you felt my beard and reached till you held my feet. Swiftly arose and spread about me the peace and joy and knowledge that pass all the art and argument of the earth. And I know that the hand of God is the elder hand of my own. And I know that the spirit of God is the eldest brother of my own. And that all the men ever born are also my brothers and the women my sisters and lovers. And that a calcin of the creation is love. And limitless are leaves, stiff or drooping in the fields, and brown ants in the little wells beneath them, and mossy scabs of the worm fence and heaped stones, and elder, and mullen, and pokeweed. Six, a child said, what is the grass? 
fetching it to me with full hands. How could I answer the child? I do not know what it is any more than he. I guess it must be the flag of my disposition out of hopeful green stuff woven. Or I guess it is the handkerchief of the Lord, a scented gift and remembrancer designedly dropped, bearing the owner's name some way in the corners that we may see and remark and say, whose? Or I guess the grass is itself a child, <clears throat> the produced babe of vegetation. <clears throat> or I guess it is a uniform hieroglyphic, and it means sprouting alike in broad zones and narrow zones, growing among black folks as among white, Canuck, Tuckahoe, Congressman, Cuff, I give them the same, I receive them the same. And now it seems to me the beautiful uncut hair of graves. Tenderly will I use you, curling grass. It may be you transpire from the breast of young men. It may be if I had known them, I would have loved them. It may be you are from old people and from women and from offspring taken soon out of their mother's laps. And here you are, the mother's laps. The grass is very dark to be from the white heads of old mothers, darker than the colorless beards of old men, dark to come from under the faint red roofs of mouths. Oh, I perceive, after all, so many uttering tongues and I perceive they do not come from the roofs of mouths for nothing. I wish I could translate the hints about the dead young men and women, and the hints about old men and mothers, and the offspring soon out of their laps. What do you think has become of the young and the old men? And what do you think has become of the women and children? They are alive and well somewhere, the smallest sprout shows there really is no death. And if ever there was, it led forward life and does not wait at the end to arrest it and cease the moment life appeared. All goes onward and outward and nothing collapses. And to die is different from what anyone supposed and luckier. Seven. Has anyone supposed it lucky to be born? I hasten to inform him or her it is just as lucky to die, and I know it. I pass death with the dying and birth with the new washed babe, and I'm not contained between my hat and boots, and peruse manifold objects, no two alike, and everyone good, the earth good, and the stars good, and their adjuncts all good, I am not an earth, nor an adjunct of the earth. I am the mate and companion of people, all just as immortal and fathomless as myself. They do not know how immortal, but I know. Every kind for itself and its own. For me, mine, male and female. For me, all that have been boys and that love women. For me, the man that is proud and feels how it stings to be slighted. For me, the sweetheart and the old maid. For me, mothers and the mothers of mothers. For me, lips that have smiled, eyes that have shed tears. For me, children, the begetters of children. Who would be afraid of the merge? Undraped, you are not guilty to me, nor stale, nor discarded. I see through the broadcloth and gingham, whether or no, and am around, tenacious, acquisitive, tireless, and can never be shaken away. Eight. The little one sleeps in its cradle. I lift the gauze and look a long time and silently brush away flies with my hand. The youngster and the red-faced girl Turn up, aside, up the bushy hill. I peeringly view them from the top. The suicide sprawls on the bloody floor of the bedroom. It is so. 
I witnessed the corpse. There the pistol has fallen. The blab of the pave, the tires of carts and slough of boot soles, and the talk of the promenaders, the heavy omnibus, the driver with his interrogating thumb, the clank of the shod horses on the granite floor, the carnival of sleighs, the clinking and shouted jokes and pelts of snowballs, the hurrahs for popular favorites, the fury of roused mobs, the flap of the curtained litter, the sick man inside borne to the hospital, the meeting of enemies, the sudden oath, the blows and fall, the excited crowd, the policeman with his star quickly working his passage to the center of the crowd, the impassive stones that receive and return so many echoes, the souls moving along. Are they invisible while the least atom of the stones is visible? What groans of overfed or half-starved who fall on the flags unstruck or in fits? What exclamations of women taken suddenly who hurry home and give birth to babes? What living and buried speech is already is always vibrating here? What howls restrained by decorum, arrests of criminals, slights, adulterous offers made, acceptances, rejections with convex lips? I mind them or the resonance of them. I come again and again. Nine. The big doors of the country barn stand open and ready. The dried grass of the harvest time loads the slow drawn wagon. The clear light plays on the brown, gray, and green intertinged. The armfuls are packed to the sagging mow. I am there. I help. I came stretched atop of the load. I feel its soft jolts. One leg reclined on the other. I jump from the cross beams and seize the clover and Timothy and roll head over heels and tangle my hair full of wisps. 10. Alone, far in the wilds and mountains, I hunt, wandering amazed at my own lightness and glee in the late afternoon, choosing a safe spot to pass the night, kindling a fire and broiling the fresh killed game, soundly falling asleep on the gathered leaves, my dog and gun by my side. The Yankee clipper is under her three sky sails. She cuts the sparkle and scud. My eyes settle the land. I bend at her prow or shout joyously from the deck. The boatmen and clam diggers arose early and stopped for me. I tucked my trouser ends in my boots and went and had a good time. You should have been with us that day round the chowder kettle. I saw the marriage of the trapper in the open air in the far west. <clears throat> the bride was a red girl. Her father and his friends sat nearby, cross-legged and dumbly smoking. They had moccasins to their feet and large, thick blankets hanging from their shoulders. On a bank lounged the trapper. He was dressed mostly in skins, his luxuriant beard and curls protected his neck. One hand rested on his rifle, the other hand held firmly the wrist of the red girl. She had long eyelashes. Her head was bare, her coarse straight locks descended upon her voluptuous limbs and reached to her feet. The runaway slave came to my house and stopped outside. I heard his motions crackling the twigs of the woodpile. Through the swung half door of the kitchen, I saw him limpsy and weak and went where he sat on a log and led him in and assured him and brought water and filled a tub for his sweated body and bruised feet and gave him a room that entered from my own and gave him some coarse, clean clothes and remember perfectly well his revolving eyes and his awkwardness and remember putting plasters on the galls of his neck and ankles he stayed with me a week before he was recuperated and passed north. I had him sit next to me at table. My firelock leaned in the corner. 11. 
28 young men bathed by the shore. 28 young men and all so friendly. 28 years of womanly life and all so lonesome. She owns a fine house by the rise of the bank. She rides handsome and richly dressed after the blinds of the window. Which of the young men does she like the best? Ah, the homeliest of them is beautiful to her. Where are you off to, lady? For I see you. You splash in the water there, yet stay stock still in your room. Dancing and laughing along the beach came the 29th bather. The rest did not see her, but she saw them and loved them. The beards of the young men glistened with wet. It ran from their long hair. Little streams passed all over their bodies. An unseen hand also passed over their bodies. It descended, it descended tremblingly from their temples and ribs. The young men float on their backs, their white bellies swell to the sun. They do not ask who seizes them fast to them. They do not know who puffs and declines with pendant and bending arch. They do not think whom they souse with spray. 12. The butcher boy puts off his killing clothes or sharpens his knife at the stall in the market. I loiter, enjoying his repartee and his shuffle and breakdown. Blacksmiths with grimed and hairy chests environ the anvil. Each has his man sledge. They're all out. There is a great heat in the fire. From the cinder-strewed threshold, I follow their movements. The lithe shear of their waist plays even with their massive arms. Overhand, the hammers roll. Overhand so slow, overhand so sure, they do not hasten. Each man hits him in his place. 13. The Negro holds firmly the reins of his four horses. The block swags underneath on its tied over chain. The Negro that drives the huge dray of the stone yard. Steady and tall, he stands poised on one leg on the string piece. His blue shirt exposes his ample neck and breast and loosens over his hip band. His glance is calm and commanding. He tosses the slouch of his hat away from his forehead. The sun falls on his crispy hair and mustache, falls on the black of his polished and perfect limbs. I behold a picturesque giant and love him. And I do not stop there. I go with the team also. In me, the caresser of life, wherever moving, backward as well as forward, slewing, to niches aside and junior bending. Oxen that rattle the yoke or halt in the shade, what is it that you express in your eyes? It seems to me more than all the print I have read in my life. My tread, my tread scares the wood drake and the wood duck on my distant and day-long ramble. They rise together, they slowly circle around. I believe in those winged purposes and acknowledge the red, yellow, and white playing within me and consider the green and violet and the tufted crown intentional and do not call the tortoise unworthy because she is not something else and the mockingbird in the swamp never studied the gamut, yet trills pretty well to me. And the look of the bay mare shames silliness out of me. 14. The wild gander leads his flock through the cool night. Ya honk, he says, and sounds it down to me like an invitation. The pert may suppose it meaningless, but I listen closer. I find its purpose and place up there toward the November sky. The sharp hooved moose of the north, the cat on the house sill, the chickadee, the prairie dog, the litter of the grunting sow as they tug at her teats, the brood of the turkey hen, and she with her half spread wings. I see in them and myself the same old law. 
The press of my foot to the earth springs a hundred affections. They scorn the best I can do to relate them. I am enamored of growing outdoors, of men that live among cattle or taste of the ocean or woods, of the builders and steerers of ships, of the wielders of axes and mauls, of the drivers of horses. I can eat and sleep with them week in and week out. What is commonest and cheapest and nearest and easiest is me, me going in for my chances, spending for vast returns, adorning myself to bestow myself on the first that will take me, not asking the sky to come down to my good will, scattering it freely forever. <coughs> 15. The pure contralto sings in the organ loft. <coughs> The carpenter dresses his plank. The tongue of his foreplane whistles its wild, ascending lisp. The married and unmarried children ride home to their Thanksgiving dinner. The pilot seizes the kingpin. He heaves down with a strong arm. The mate stands braced in the whaleboat. Lance and harpoon are ready. The duck shooter walks by silent and cautious stretches. The deacons are ordained with crossed hands at the altar. The spinning girl retreats and advances to the hum of the big wheel. The farmer stops by the bars of a Sunday and looks at the oats and rye. The lunatic is carried at last to the asylum, a confirmed case. He will never sleep anymore as he did in the cot in his mother's bedroom. The jour printer with his gray head and gaunt jaws works at his case. He turns his quid of tobacco, his eyes get blurred with the manuscript. The malformed limbs are tied to the anatomist table. What is removed drops horribly in a pail. The quadroon girl is sold at the stand. The drunkard nods by the barroom stove. The machinist rolls up his sleeves. The policeman travels his beat. The gatekeeper marks who pass. The young fellow drives the express wagon. I love him, though I do not know him. The half-breed straps on his light boots to compete in the race. The western turkey shooting draws old and young. Some lean on their rifles, some sit on logs. Out from the crowd steps the marksman and takes his position and levels his piece. The groups of newly come immigrants cover the wharf or levee. The woolly pates hoe in the sugar field. The overseer views them from his saddle. The bugle calls in the ballroom. The gentlemen run for their partners. The dancers bow to each other. The youth lies awake in the cedar-roofed garret and harks to the musical rain. The wolverine sets traps on the creek that helps fill the Huron. The reformer ascends the platform. He spouts with his mouth and nose. The company returns from its excursion. The darky brings up the rear and bears the well-riddled target. The squaw, wrapped in her yellowed hem cloth, is offering moccasins and bead bags for sale. The connoisseur peers along the exhibition gallery with half-shut eyes bent sideways. The deckhands make fast the steamboat. The plank is thrown for the shore-going passengers. The young sister holds out the skein. The elder sister winds it off in a ball and stops now and then for the knots. The one-year wife is recovering and happy. A week ago, she bore her first <coughs> child. The clean-haired Yankee girl works with her sewing machine or in the factory, or mill. The nine months gone is in the parturition chamber. Her faintness and pains are advancing. The paving man leans on his two-handed rammer. The reporter's lead flies swiftly over the notebook. The sign painter is lettering with red and gold. The canal boy trots on the towpath. The bookkeeper counts at his desk. The shoemaker waxes his thread. The conductor beats time for the band, and all the performers follow him. The child is baptized. The convert is making his first professions. The regatta is spread out on the bay, how the white sails sparkle. The drover watches his drove. He sings out to them that would stray. The pen
peddler sweats with his pack on his back. The purchaser higgles about the odd set. The camera and plate are prepared. The lady must sit for her doggerel type. The bride unrumples her white dress. The minute hand of the clock moves slowly. The opium eater reclines with rigid head and just opened eyes. The prostitute draggles her shawl, her bonnet bobs on her tipsy and pimpled neck. The crowd laugh at her blaggard oaths. The men jeer and wink to each other. Miserable, I do not laugh at your oaths, nor jeer you. The president holds a cabinet council. He is surrounded by the great secretaries. On the piazza walk, five friendly matrons with twined arms. The crew of the fish smack, pack, repeated layers of halibut in the hold. The Missourian crosses the plains, toting his wares and the cattle. The fare collector goes through the train. He gives notice by the jingling of loose change. The foremen are laying the floor. The tinners are tinning the roof. The masons are calling for mortar. In single file, each shouldering his hog, pass onward the laborers. Seasons pursuing each other, the indescribable crowd is gathered. It is the 4th of July. What salutes of cannon and small arms? Seasons pursuing each other, the plower plows and the mower mows and the winter grain falls in the ground. Off on the lakes, the pike fisher watches and waits by the hole in the frozen surface. The stumps stand thick round the clearing. The squatter strikes deep with his ax. The flat boatman make fast toward dusk near the cottonwood or pecan trees. The coon seekers go now through the regions of the Red River or through those drained by the Tennessee or through those of the Arkansas. The torches shine in the dark that hangs on the Chattahoochee or Altamaha. Patriarchs sit at the supper with sons and grandsons and great-grandsons around them. In walls of adobe, in canvas tents, rest hunters and trappers after their day's sport. The city sleeps and the country sleeps. The living sleep for their time. The dead sleep for their time. The old husband sleeps by his wife, and the young husband sleeps by his wife. And these one and all tend inward to me, and I tend outward to them. And such as it is to be of these, more or less I am. 16. I am of old and young, of the foolish as much as of the wise regardless of others, ever regardful of others, maternal as well as paternal, a child as well as a man, stuffed with the stuff that is coarse and stuffed with the stuff that is fine, one of the great nations, the nation of many nations, the smallest the same and the largest the same, a southerner soon as a northerner, a planter nonchalant and hospitable, a Yankee bound by my own, ready for trade, my joints, the limberest joints on earth and the sternest joints on earth, a Kentuckian walking the veil of the Elkhorn in my dear skin leggings, a boatman over the lakes or bays or along coasts, a Hoosier, a Badger, a Buckeye, a Louisianian, a, court, a Georgian, a poke easy from sand hills and pines, at home on Canadian snowshoes or up in the bush or with fishermen off Newfoundland, at home in the fleet of ice boats, sailing with the rest and tacking at home on the hills of Vermont or in the woods of Maine or the Texan ranch, comrade of Californians, comrade of free Northwesterners, loving their big proportions, comrade of raftsmen and coalmen, comrade of all who shake hands and welcome to drink and meet, a learner with the simplest, a teacher of the thoughtfulest, a novice beginning experience of 
myriads of seasons, of every hue and trade and rank, of every caste and religion, not merely of the New World, but of Africa, Europe, or Asia, a wandering savage, a farmer, mechanic, or artist, a gentleman, sailor, lover, or Quaker, a prisoner, fancy man, rowdy, lawyer, physician, or priest. I resist anything better than my own diversity and breathe the air and leave plenty after me and I'm not stuck up and in my place. The moths and the fish eggs are in their place. The suns I see and the suns I cannot see are in their place. The palpable is in its place and the impalpable is in its place. 17. These are the thoughts of all men in all ages and lands. They are not original with me. If they are not yours as much as mine, they are nothing or next to nothing. If they do not enclose everything, they are next to nothing. If they are not the riddle and the untying of the riddle, they are nothing. If they are not just as close as they are distant, they are nothing. <clears throat> this is the grass that grows wherever the land is and the water is. This is the common air that bathes the globe. This is the breath of laws and songs and behavior. This is the tasteless water of souls. This is the true sustenance. It is for the illiterate. It is for the judges of the Supreme Court. It is for the federal capital and the state capitals. It is for the admirable communes of literary men, composers and singers and lecturers and engineers and savens. It is for the endless races of working people and farmers and seamen. 18. This is the trill of a thousand clear cornets and scream of the octave flute and strike of triangles. I play not a march for victors only. I play great marches for conquered and slain persons. Have you heard that it was good to gain the day? I also say it is good to fall. Battles are lost in the same spirit in which they are won. I sound triumphal drums for the dead. I fling through my embouchures the loudest and gayest music to them, vivas to those who have failed and to those who war, <coughs> whose war vessels sank in the sea and those themselves who sank in the sea and to all generals that lost engagements and all overcome heroes and the numberless unknown heroes equal to the greatest heroes known. 19. <clears throat> this is the meal pleasantly set. This is the meat and drink for natural hunger. It is for the wicked just the same as the righteous. I make appointments with all. I will not have a single person slighted or left away. The kept woman and sponger and thief are hereby invited. The heavy-lipped slave is invited. The venerable is invited. There shall be no difference between them and the rest. This is the press of a bashful hand. This is the float and odor of hair. This is the touch of my lips to yours. This is the murmur of yearning. This is the far off depth and height reflecting my own face. This is the thoughtful merge of myself and the outlet again. Do you guess I have some intricate purpose? Well, I have. For the April rain has, and the mica on the side of a rock has. Do you take it I would astonish? Does the daylight astonish? Or the early red start twittering through the woods? Do I astonish more than they? This hour, I tell things in confidence. I might not tell everybody, but I will tell you. 20. Who goes there, hankering? gross, mystical, nude. How is it I extract strength from the beef I eat? What is a man, anyhow? 
What am I? And what are you? All I mark as my own, you shall offset it with your own. Else it were time lost listening to me. I do not snivel that snivel the world over, that months are, are vacuums and the ground but wallow in filth, that life is a suck and a sell, and nothing remains at the end but threads <coughs> of crepe and tears. Whimpering and truckling fold with powders for invalids. Conformity goes to the fourth removed. I cock my hat as I please, indoors or out. Shall I pray? Shall I venerate and be ceremonious? I have pried through the strata and analyzed to a hair and counseled with doctors and calculated close and, and found no sweeter fat than sticks to my own bones. In all people I see myself, none more and not one a barleycorn less. All the good or bad I say of myself, I say of them. And I know I am solid and sound. To me the converging objects of the universe perpetually flow. All are written to me, and I must get what the writing means. And I know I am deathless. I know this orbit of mine cannot be swept by the carpenter's compass. I know I shall not pass like a child's curlicue cut with a burnt stick at night. I know I am August. I do not tremble my spirit to vindicate itself or to be understood. I see that the elementary laws never apologize. I reckon I behave no prouder than the level I plant my house by, after all. I exist as I am. That is enough. If no other in the world be aware, I sit content. And if each and all be aware, I sit content. One world is aware, and by far the largest to me, and that is myself. And whether I come to my own today or in 10,000 or 10 million years, I can cheerfully take it now, or with equal, equal cheerfulness, I can wait. My foothold is tenoned and mortised in granite. I laugh at what you call dissolution. I know the amplitude of time. 21. I am the poet of the body, and I am the poet of the soul. The, the pleasures, pleasures of heaven, heaven are, are with me, and, and the pains of hell, hell are, are with, with me. me. The, the first, first I graft and increase upon myself, the latter I translate into a new tongue. I am the poet of the woman, the same as the man, and I say it is as great to be a woman as to be a man. And I say there is nothing greater than the mother of men. I, I chant a new chant of dilation or pride. We have had ducking and deprecating about enough. I show that size is only development. Have you outstripped the rest? Are you the president? It is a trifle. They will more than arrive there, everyone and still pass on. I am he that walks with the tender and growing night. I call to the earth and see half held by the night. Press close bare bosom night. Press close magnetic nourishing night. Night of south winds, night of the large few stars. Still nodding night, mad naked summer night. Smile, O oh, voluptuous, cool breath, earth, earth of the slumbering and liquid trees, earth of the departed sunset, earth of the mountains misty topped, earth of the vitreous pour of the full moon just tinged with blue, earth of shine and dark mottling the tide of the river. Earth of the limpid gray of clouds, brighter and clearer for my sake. Far swooping elbowed earth, rich apple blossomed earth. Smile, for your lover comes. Thruster, holding me tight, and that I hold tight. We hurt each other, 
as the bridegroom and the bride hurt each other. 22. You see, I resign myself to you also. I guess what you mean. I behold from the beach your crooked, inviting fingers. I believe you refuse to go back without feeling of me. We must have a turn together. I undress. Hurry me out of sight of the land. Cushion me soft. Rock me in billowy drowse. Dash me with amorous wet. I can repay you. Sea of stretched ground swells. Sea breathing broad and convulsive breaths. Sea of the brine of life. Sea of unshoveled and always ready graves. Howler and scooper of storms. Capricious and dainty sea. I am integral with you. I too am of one phase and of all phases. Partaker of influx and efflux. Extoller of hate and conciliation. Extoller of armies and those that sleep in each other's arms. I am he attesting sympathy. Shall I make my list of things in the house and skip the house that supports them? I am the poet of common sense and of the demonstrable and of the end of immortality. And I'm not the poet of goodness only. I do not decline to be the poet of wickedness also. Washes and razors for foo-foos. For me, freckles and a bristling beard. What Blurt is it about virtue and about vice. Evil propels me, and reform of evil propels me. I stand indifferent. My gate is no fault finder's or rejecter's gate. I moisten the roots of all that has grown. Did you fear some scrofula out of the unflagging pregnancy? Did you guess the celestial laws are yet to be worked over and rectified? I step up to say that what we do is right and what we affirm is right, and some is only the oar of right, witness of us, one side a balance and the antipodal side a balance, soft doctrine as steady help and as stable of doctrine, thoughts and deeds of the present, our rouse and early start. This minute that comes to me over the past decillions there is no better than it and now. What behaved well in the past or behaved well today is not such a wonder. The wonder is always and always how there can be a mean man or an infidel. 23. Endless unfolding of words of ages. And mine, a word of the modern, a word en masse. A word of the faith that never balks. One time as good as another time, here or henceforward, it is all the same to me. A word of reality, materialism first and last imbuing. Hurrah for positive science. Long live exact demonstration. Fetch stone crop and mix it with cedar and branches of lilac. This is the lexicographer or chemist. This makes a grammar of the old cartouches. These mariners put the ship through dangerous unknown seas. This is the geologist, and this works with the scalpel, and this is a mathematician. Gentlemen, I receive you and attach and clasp hands with you. The facts are useful and real. They are not my dwelling. I enter by them to an area of the dwelling. I am less the reminder of property or qualities and more the reminder of life and go on the square for my own sake and for others' sake and make short accounts of neuters and geldings and favor men and women fully equipped and beat the gong of revolt and stop with fugitives and them that plot and conspire. 24. Walt Whitman, an American, one of the roughs, a cosmos, disorderly, fleshy, and sensual, eating, drinking, and breeding, no sentimentalist, no stander above men and women 
or apart from them. No more modest than immodest. Unscrew the locks from the doors. Unscrew the doors themselves from their jams. Yes. Whoever degrades another degrades me. And whatever is done or said returns at last to me. And whatever I do or say, I also return. Through me, the afflute is surging and surging. Through me, the current and index. I speak the word primeval. I give the sign of democracy. By God, I will accept nothing which all cannot have their counterpart of on the same terms. Through me, many long, dumb voices, voices of the interminable generations of slaves, voices of prostitutes and of deformed persons, voices of the deceased and despairing, of the thieves and dwarves, voices of cycles of preparation and accretion, and of the threads that connect the stars, and of wombs, and of the father's stuff, and of the rights of them the others are down upon, of the trivial and flat and foolish and despised, of fog in the air and beetles rolling balls of dung. Through me, forbidden voices, voices of sexes and lust, voices veiled and I remove the veil, voices indecent by me clarified and transfigured. I do not press my finger across my mouth. I keep as delicate around the bowels as around the head and heart. Copulation is no more rank to me than death is. I believe in the flesh and appetites. Seeing, hearing, and feeling are miracles, and each part and tag of me is, is a miracle. Divine am I inside and out, and I make holy whatever I touch or am touched from. The scent of these armpits is aroma finer than prayer. This head is more than churches or Bibles or creeds. If I worship any particular thing, it shall be some of the spread of my body. Translucent mold of me, it shall be you, shaded ledges and rests, firm masculine culture, it shall be you. Whatever goes to the tilth of me, it shall be you. You, my rich blood, your milky stream, pale strippings of my life, breast that presses against other breasts, it shall be you. My brain, it shall be your occult convolutions, root of washed sweet flag, timorous pond snipe, nest of guarded duplicate eggs, it shall be you. Mixed tussled hay of head and beard and brawn, it shall be you. Tickling sap of maple, fiber of manly wheat, it shall be you. Sun so generous, it shall be you. Vapors lighting and shading my face, it shall be you. You sweaty brooks and dews, it shall be you. Winds whose soft tickling genitals rub against me, it shall be you. Broad muscular fields, branches of live oak, the loving lounger in my winding paths, it shall be you. Hands I have taken, face I have kissed, mortal I have ever touched. It shall be you. <coughs> I dote on myself. There is that lot of me, and all so luscious. Each moment, and whatever happens, thrills me with joy. I cannot tell how my ankles bend, nor whence the cause of my faintest wish, nor the cause of the friendship I emit, nor the cause of the friendship I take again. To walk up my stoop is unaccountable. I pause to consider if it really be that I eat and drink is spectacle enough for the great authors and schools. A morning glory at my window satisfies me more than the metaphysics of books. To behold the daybreak, the little light fades the immense and diaphanous shadows, the air tastes good to my palate. Hefts of the moving world at innocent gambles sli silently rising freshly exuding, scooting obliquely high and low. Something I cannot see 
puts upward libidinous prongs. Seas of bright juice suffuse heaven. The earth by the sky stayed with the daily close of their junction, the heaved challenge from the east that moment over my head, the mocking taunt. See then whether you shall be master. 25. Dazzling and tremendous how quick the sunrise would kill me if I could not now and always send sunrise out of me. We also ascend dazzling and tremendous as the sun. We found our own, my soul, in the calm and cool of the daybreak. My voice goes after what my eyes cannot reach. With the twirl of my tongue, I encompass worlds and volumes of worlds. Speech is the twin of my vision. It is unequal to measure itself. It provokes me forever. It says sarcastically, well, you understand enough. Why can't you just let it out then? Come now, I will not be tantalized. You conceive too much of articulation. Do you not know how the buds beneath are folded, <coughs> waiting in gloom protected by frost, the dirt receding before my prophetical screams, I underlying causes to balance them at last, my knowledge, my life parts, it keeping tally with the meaning of things, happiness, which whoever hears me, let him or her set out in search of this day. My final merit, I refuse you. I refuse putting from me the best I am. Encompass worlds, but never try to encompass me. I crowd your noisiest talk by looking toward you. Writing and talk do not prove me. I carry the plenum of proof, and everything else is in my face. With the hush of my lips, I confound the topmost skeptic. 26. I think I will do nothing for a long time but listen and accrue what I hear into myself and let sounds contribute toward me. I hear the bravures of birds, the bustle of growing wheat, the gossip of flames, clack of sticks cooking my meals. I hear the sound of the human voice, a sound I love. I hear all sounds as they are tuned to their uses, sounds of the city and sounds out of the city, sounds of the day and night, talkative young ones to those that like them. The recitative of fish peddlers and fruit peddlers, the loud laugh of work people at their meals, the angry boy bass of disjointed friendship, the faint tones of the sick, the judge with hands tight to the desk, his shaky lips pronouncing a death sentence, the heave-ho of stevedores unlading ships by the wharves, the refrain of the anchor lifters, the ring of alarm bells, the cry of fire, the whirl of swift streaking engines and horse carts with premonitory tinkles and colored lights, the steam whistle, the solid roll of the train of approaching cars, the slow march played at night at the head of the association. They go to guard some corpse. The flag tops are draped with black muslin. I hear the violin cello or man's heart complaint. I hear the keyed cornet or else the echo of sunset. I hear the chorus. It is a grand opera. This indeed is music. A tenor large and fresh as the creation fills me. The orbic flex of his mouth is pouring and filling me full. I hear the trained soprano. She convulses me like the climax of my love grip. The orchestra whirls me wider than Uranus flies. It wrenches unnameable ardors from my breast. It throbs me to gulps of the farthest down horror. It sails me. I dab with bare feet. They are licked by the indolent waves. I am exposed, cut by bitter and poisoned hail, steeped amid honeyed morphine my windpipe squeezed in the fakes of death. 
let up again to feel the puzzle of puzzles, and that we call being. 27. To be in any form, what is that? If nothing lay more developed, the quahog in its callous shell were enough. Mine is no callous shell. I have instant conductors all over me. Whether I pass or stop, they seize every object and lead it harmlessly through me. I merely stir, press, feel with my fingers and am happy. To touch my person to someone else's is about as much as I can stand. 28. Is this then a touch? Quivering me to a new identity, flames and ether making a rush from my veins, treacherous tip of me reaching and crowding to help them, my flesh and blood playing out lightning to strike what is hardly different from myself. On all sides, prurient provokers stiffening my limbs, straining the udder of my heart for its withheld drip, <clears throat> behaving licentious toward me, taking no denial, depriving me of my best as for a purpose, unbuttoning my clothes and holding me by the bare waist, deluding my confusion with the calm of the sunlight and pasture fields, immodestly sliding the fellow senses away. They bribed to swap off with touch and go and graze at the edges of me. No consideration, no regard for my draining strength or my anger, fetching the rest of the herd around to enjoy them a while, the all uniting to stand on a headland and worry me. The sentries desert every other part of me. They have left me helpless to a red marauder. They all come to the headland to witness and assist against me. I am given up by traitors. I talk wildly. I have lost my wits. I and nobody else am the greatest traitor. I went myself first to the headland. My own hands carried me there. You villain touch, what are you doing? My breath is tight in its throats. Unclench your floodgates. You are too much for me. 29. <clears throat> Blind, loving, wrestling touch. She hooded, sharp toothed touch. Did it make you ache so, leaving me? Parting tracked by arriving, perpetual payment of the perpetual loan, rich showering rain, and recompense richer afterwards. Sprouts take and accumulate, stand by the curb prolific and vital. Landscapes projected, masculine, full size, and golden. 30. All truths wait in all things. They neither hasten their own delivery nor resist it. They do not need the obstetric forceps of the surgeon. The insignificant is as big to me as any. What is less or more than a touch? Logic and sermons never convince. The damp of the night drives deeper into my soul. Only what proves itself to every man and woman is so. Only what nobody denies is so. A minute and a drop of me settle my brain. I believe the soggy clods shall become lovers and lamps. And a compend of compends is the meat of a man or woman and a summit and flower there is the feeling they have for each other. And they are to branch boundlessly out of that lesson until it becomes omnific, and until everyone shall delight us and we them. 31. I believe a leaf of grass is no less than the journey work of the stars, and the piss mire is equally perfect and a grain of sand, and the egg of the wren, and the tree toad as a chef d'oeuvre for the highest, and the running blackberry would adorn the parlors of heaven, and the narrowest hinge in my hand puts to scorn all machinery, and the cow crunching with depressed head surpasses any statue, and a mouse 
is miracle enough to stagger sextillions of infidels. And I could come every afternoon of my life to look at the farmer's girl boiling her iron tea kettle and baking shortcake. I find I incorporate nice and cold and long-threaded moss and fruits and grains and esculent roots, and I'm stuccoed with quadrupeds and birds all over and have distanced what is behind me for good reasons, and I call anything close again when I desire it. In, in vain, vain the speeding or shyness, in vain the plutonic rocks send their old heat against, against my approach. In, in vain, vain the mastodon retreats beneath its own powdered bones. In vain objects stand leagues off and assume manifold shapes. In vain the ocean settling in hollows and the great monsters lying low. In vain the buzzard houses herself with the sky. In vain the snake slides through the creepers and logs. In vain, the elk takes to the inner passes of the woods. In vain, the razor-billed auk sails far north to Labrador. I follow quickly. I ascend to the nest in the fissure of the cliff. And we'll leap off in five minutes. We're going to take a little break. We've got water back there. We've got apple juice. Take a little break, and we'll pick up again after the break. Thanks. Poets, they just... Bubble diarrhea, lava rain. Okay. 32. I think I could turn and live a while with the animals. They are so placid and self-contained. I stand and look at them sometimes half the day long. They do not sweat and whine about their condition. <laughs> they do not lie awake in the dark and weep for their sins. They do not make me sick discussing their duty to God. Not one is dissatisfied. Not one is demented with the mania of owning things. Not one kneels to another, nor to his kind that lived thousands of years ago. Not one is respectable or industrious over the whole earth. So they show their relations to me and I accept them. They bring me tokens of myself. They evince them plainly in their possession. I do not know where they got those tokens. I must have passed that way untold times ago and negligently dropped them. Myself moving forward then and now and forever gathering and showing more always and with velocity, infinite, omnigenous, and the like of these among them, not too exclusive towards the reachers of my remembrancers, picking out here one that shall be my ami, choosing to go with him on brotherly terms, a gigantic beauty of a stallion, fresh and responsive to my caresses, head high in the forehead and wide between the ears, limbs glossy and supple, tail dusting the ground, eyes well apart and full of sparkling wickedness, ears finely cut and flexibly moving, his nostrils dilate, my heels embrace him, his well-built limbs tremble with pleasure, we speed around and return, I but use you a moment and then I resign you, stallion and do not need your paces, and I'll gallop them, and myself as I stand or sit, passing faster than you. 33. Swift wind, space, my soul. Now I know it is true what I guessed at, what I guessed when I loafed on the grass, what I guessed while I lay alone in my bed, and again as I walked the beach under the paling stars of the morning. My ties and ballasts leave me. I travel. I sail. My elbows rest in the sea gaps. I skirt the Sierras. My palms cover continents. I am afoot with my vision. By the city's quadrangular houses, in log huts or camping with lumbermen, 
along the ruts of the turnpike, along the dry gulch and rivulet bed, hoeing my onion patch and rows of carrots and parsnips, crossing savannas, trailing in forests, prospecting, gold digging, girdling the trees of a new purchase, scorched ankle deep by the hot sand, hauling my boat down the shallow river, where the panther walks to and fro on a limb overhead, where the buck turns furiously at the hunter, where the rattlesnake suns his flabby length on a rock, where the otter is feeding on fish, where the alligator in his tough pimple sleeps by the bayou, where the black bear is searching for roots or honey, where the beaver pats the mud with his paddle tail. Over the growing sugar, over the cotton plant, over the rice in its low, moist field, over the sharp, peaked farmhouse with its scalloped scum and slender shoots from the gutters, over the western persimmon, over the long-leaved corn and the delicate blue-flowered flax, over the white and brown buckwheat, a hummer and a buzzer there with the rest, over the dusky green of the rye as it ripples and shades in the breeze, scaling mountains, pulling myself cautiously up, holding on by low, scragged limbs, walking the path worn in the grass and beat through the leaves of the brush, where the quail is whistling betwixt the woods and the wheat lot, where the bat flies in the July eve, where the great gold bug drops through the dark, where the flails keep time on the barn floor, where the brook puts out the roots of the old tree and flows to the meadow, where cattle stand and shake away flies with the tremulous shuddering of their hides, where the cheesecloth hangs in the kitchen and andirons straddle the hearth slab and cobwebs fall in festoons from the rafters, where trip hammers crash, where the press is whirling its cylinders, Wherever the human heart beats with terrible throes out of its ribs. Where the pear-shaped balloon is floating aloft, floating in it myself and looking composedly down. Where the life car is drawn on the slip noose. Where the heat hatches pale green eggs in the dented sand. Where the she-whale swims with her calves and never forsakes them where the steamship trails hindways its long pennant of smoke, where the ground shark's fin cuts like a black chip out of the water, where the half-burned brig is riding on unknown currents, where shells grow to her slimy deck and the dead are corrupting below, where the striped and starred flag is borne at the head of the regiments. Approaching Manhattan, up by the long stretching island. Under Niagara, the cataract falling like a veil over my countenance. Upon a doorstep, upon the horse block of hard wood outside, upon the race course, or enjoying picnics or jigs or a good game of baseball. At he festivals with the blaggard jibes and the ironical license and bull dances and drinking and laughter. At the cider mill, tasting the sweet of the brown squish, sucking the juice through a straw, at apple peelings, waiting for kisses, wanting kisses for all the fruit I find, at musters and beach parties and friendly bees and huskings and house raisings, where the mockingbird sounds his delicious gurgles <coughs> and cackles and screams and weeps, where the hayrick stands in the barnyard and the dry stalks are scattered and the brood cow waits in the hovel, where the bull advances to do his masculine work and stud to the mare and the cock is treading the hen, where the heifers browse and the geese nip their food with short jerks, where the sundown shadows lengthen over limitless and lonesome prairie, where the herds of buffalo make a crawling spread of the square miles far and near, where the hummingbird shimmers where the neck of the long-lived swan is curving and winding, where the laughing gull scoots by the slappy shore and laughs her near-human laugh, where beehives range on a gray bench in the garden, half hid by the high weeds, where the band-necked partridges roost in a ring 
on the ground with their heads out, where the burial coaches enter the arched gates of a cemetery, where winter wolves bark amid waste of snow and icicled trees, where the young crowned heron comes to the edge of the marsh at night and feeds upon small crabs, where the splash of swimmers and divers cools the warm noon, where the katydid works a chromatic reed on the walnut tree over the well, through patches of citrons and cucumbers with silver wired leaves, through the salt lick or orange glade or under conical ferns, through the gymnasium, through the curtain saloon, through the office or public hall. Pleased with the native and pleased with the foreign, pleased with the new and the old, pleased with women, the homely as well as the handsome, pleased with the Quakeress as she puts off her bonnet and talks melodiously, pleased with the primitive tunes of the choir of the whitewashed church, pleased with the earnest words of the sweating Methodist preacher or any preacher looking seriously at the camp meeting, looking in at the shop windows in Broadway in the <coughs> forenoon, pressing the flesh of my nose to the thick plate glass, wandering the same afternoon with my face turned up to the clouds, my right and left arms round the sides of two friends and I in the middle, coming home with the bearded and dark-cheeked bush boy, riding behind him at the drape of the day, far from the settlements, studying the prints of animal feet or the moccasin print by the cot in the hospital, reaching lemonade to a feverish patient, by the coffined corpse when all is still, examining with a candle, voyaging to every port to dicker and adventure, hurrying with the modern crowd as eager and fickle as any, hot towards one I hate, ready in my madness to knife him, <clears throat> solitary at night in my backyard, my thoughts gone from me a long while, walking the old hills of Judea with the beautiful, gentle God by my side, speeding through space, speeding through heaven and the stars, speeding amid the seven satellites and the broad ring in the diameter of 80,000 miles, speeding with tailed meteors, throwing fireballs like the rest, carrying the crescent child that carries its own full mother in its belly, storming, enjoying, planning, loving, cautioning, backing and filling, appearing and disappearing. I tread day and night such roads. I visit the orchards of God and look at the spirit product and look at quintillions ripened and look at quintillions green. I fly the flight of the fluid and swallowing soul. My course runs below the sounding of plummets. I help myself to material and immaterial. No guard can shut me off, no law can prevent me. I anchor my ship for a little while only. My messengers continually cruise away or bring their returns to me. I go hunting polar furs and the seal, leaping chasms with a pike-pointed staff, clinging to topples of brittle and blue. I ascend to the fore truck. I take my place late at night in the crow's nest. We sail through the Arctic Sea. It is plenty light enough. Through the clear atmosphere, I stretch around on the wonderful beauty. The enormous masses of ice pass me, and I pass them. The scenery is plain in all directions. The white-topped mountains point up in the distance. I fling out my fancies toward them. We are about approaching some great battlefield in which we are soon to be engaged. We pass the colossal outposts of the encampment. We pass with still feet and caution. Or we are entering by the suburbs some vast and ruined city, the blocks and fallen architecture more than all the living cities of the globe. I am a free companion. I bivouac by invading watchfires. I turn the bridegroom out of bed and stay with the bride myself and tighten her all night to my thighs and lips. My voice is the wife's voice, the screech by the rail of the stairs, they fetch my man's body up, 
dripping and drowned. I understand the large hearts of heroes, the courage of present times and all times, how the skipper saw the crowded and rudderless wreck of the steamship and death chasing it up and down the storm, how he knuckled tight, gave not one inch back and was faithful of nights and faithful of days and chalked in large letters on a board, be of good cheer, we will not desert you. How he saved the drifting company at last, how the lank, loose-gowned women looked when boated from the side of their prepared graves. How the silent, old-faced infants and the lifted sick and the sharp, lipped, unshaved men. All this I swallow and it tastes good. I like it well and it becomes mine. I am the man, I suffered, I was there. The disdain and calmness of martyrs, the mother condemned for a witch and burnt with dry wood and her children gazing on. The hounded slave that flags in the race and leans by the fence, blowing and covered with sweat, the twinges that sting like needles his legs and neck, the murderous buckshot and the bullets, all these I feel or am. I am the hounded slave. I wince at the bite of the dogs. Hell and despair are, are, on, are upon me. Crack and again crack the marksman. I clutch the rails <coughs> of the fence. My gourd dribs thinned with the ooze of my skin. I fall in the weeds and stones. <coughs> The riders spur their unwilling horses and haul close. They taunt my dizzy ears. They beat me violently over the head with their whip stocks. Agonies are one of my changes of garments. I do not ask the wounded person how he feels. I myself become the wounded person. My hurt turns livid upon me as I lean on a cane and observe. I am the mashed fireman with breast bone broken. Tumbling walls buried me in their debris. Heat and smoke I inspired. I heard the yelling shouts of my comrades. I heard the distant click of their picks and shovels. They have cleared the beams away. They tenderly lift me forth. I lie in the night air in my red shirt. The pervading hush is for my sake. Painless after all, I lie. Exhausted, but not so unhappy, white and beautiful are the faces around me. The heads are bared of their fire caps. The kneeling crowd fades with the light of the torches. Distant and dead resuscitate. They show as the dial or move as the hands of me, and I am the clock myself. I am an old artillerist, and tell of some fort's bombardment, and am there again. Again the reveille of drummers, again the attacking cannon and mortars and howitzers, again the attacked send their cannon responsive, I take part. I see and hear the whole, the cries and curses and roar, the plaudits for well-aimed shots, the ambulanza slowly passing and trailing its red drip, workmen searching after damages, and to make indispensable repairs, the fall of grenades through the rent roof, the fan-shaped explosion, the whiz of limbs, heads, stone, wood, <coughs> and iron high in the air. Again gurgles the mouth of my dying general. He furiously waves with his hand. He gasps through the clot. Mind not me, mind the entrenchment. 34. I tell not the fall of Alamo. No one escaped to tell of Alamo. The 150 are dumb yet at Alamo. Hear now the tale of a jet black sunrise. Hear the murder in cold blood of 412 young men. Retreating, they had formed in a hollow square with their baggage for breastworks. 900 lives out of the surrounding enemies, nine times their number was the price they took in advance. Their colonel was wounded and their ammunition gone. They treated for an honorable capitulation, received writing and seal, 
gave up their arms and marched back prisoners of war. They were the glory of the race of rangers, matchless with a horse, a rifle, a song, a supper of a courtship, large, turbulent, brave, handsome, generous, proud, and affectionate, bearded, sunburnt, dressed in the free costume of hunters, not a single one over 30 years of age. The second Sunday morning, they were brought out in squads and massacred. It was a beautiful early summer morn. The work commenced about five o'clock and was over by eight. No one obeyed the command to kneel. Some made a mad and helpless rush. Some stood stark and straight. A few fell at once, shot in the temple or heart. The living and the dead lay together. The maimed and the mangled dug in the dirt. <coughs> the newcomers <coughs> saw them there. Some half killed attempted to crawl away. They were dispatched with bayonets or battered with the blunts of muskets. A youth not 17 years old seized his assassin till two more came to release him. The three were all torn and covered with the boy's blood. At 11 o'clock began the burning of the bodies. And that is the tale of the murder of 412 young men. And that was a jet black sunrise. 35. Did you read in the sea books of the old fashioned frigate fight? Did you learn who won by the light of the moon and the stars? Our foe was no skulk in his ship, I tell you. His was the English pluck, and there's no tougher or truer, and never was, and never will be. Along the lowered eve he came, horribly raking us. We closed with him, the yards entangled, the cannons touched, my captain lashed fast with his own hands. We received some 18 pound shots under the water. On our lower gun deck, two large pieces had burst at the first fire, killing all round and blowing up overhead. 10 o'clock at night, and the full moon shining, and the leaks on the gain in five feet of water reported. The mastered hands loosing the prisoners confined in the afterhold to give them a chance for themselves. The transit to and from the magazine was now stopped by the sentinels. They saw so many strange faces they didn't know whom to trust. Our frigate was afire. The other asked if we demanded quarters, for our colors were struck and the fighting done. I laughed content when I heard the voice of my little captain. We have not struck, he composedly cried. We have just begun our part of the fighting. Only three guns were in use. One was directed by the captain himself against the <coughs> enemy's main mast. Two, well served with grape and canisters, silenced his musketry and cleared his decks. The tops alone second the fire of this little battery, especially the main top. They all held out bravely during the whole of the action. Not a moment ceased. The leaks gained fast on the pumps. The fire eat towards the powder magazine. One of the pumps was shot away. It was generally thought they were sinking. Serene stood the little captain. He was not hurried. His voice was neither high nor low. His eyes gave more light to us than our battle lanterns. Towards 12 at night, there in the beams of the moon, they surrendered to us. 36. Stretched and still lay the midnight, two great hulls motionless on the breast of the darkness, our vessel riddled and slowly sinking, preparations to pass to the one we had conquered, the captain on the quarter deck coldly giving his orders through a countenance white as a sheet. Nearby the corpse of the child that served in the cabin, the dead face of an old salt with long white hair and carefully curled whiskers, the flames, spite of all that could be done, flickering aloft and below. The husky voices of the two or three officers yet fit for duty, formless stacks of bodies 
and bodies by themselves, dabs of flesh upon the masts and the spars, the cut of cordage and dangle of rigging, the slight shock of the soothe of waves, black and impressive guns, the litter of powder parcels and the strong scent, delicate sniffs of the sea breeze, smells of sedgy grass and fields by the shore, death messages given in charge to survivors, the hiss of the surgeon's knife and the gnawing teeth of his saw, the wheeze, the cluck, the swash of falling blood, the short wild scream, the long dull tapering groan. These so, these irretrievable. 37. O oh Christ, my fit is mastering me. What the rebel said gaily, adjusting his throat to the rope noose. What the savage at the stump, his eye sockets empty, his mouth spurting whoops in defiance. What stills the traveler come to the vault at Mount Vernon? What sobers the Brooklyn boy as he looks down the shores of the wallabout and remembers the prison ships? What burnt the gums of the red coat at Saratoga when he surrenders his brigades? These become mine and me, every one, and they are but little. I become as much more as I like. I become any presence or truth of humanity here and see myself in prison shaped like another man and feel the dull, unintermitted pain. For me, the keepers of convicts shoulder their carbines and keep watch. It is I let out in the morning and barred at night. Not a mutineer walks handcuffed to the jail, but I am handcuffed to him and walk by his side. I am less the jolly one there and more the silent one with sweat on my twitching lips. Not a youngster is taken for larceny, but I go too and am tried and sentenced. Not a cholera patient lies to the last gasp, but I also lie at the last gasp. My face is ash colored, my sinews gnarl. Away from me, people retreat. Askers embody themselves in me and I am embodied in them. I project my hat and sit shamefaced and beg. I rise ecstatic through all and sweep with true gravitation. The whirling and whirling is elemental within me. 38. Somehow I've been stunned. Stand back. Give me a little time beyond my cupped head and slumbers and dreams and gaping. I discover myself on the verge of the usual mistake, that I could forget the mockers and insults, that I could forget the trickling tears and the blows of the bludgeons and hammers, that I could look with a separate look on my own crucifixion and bloody crowning, I remember. I resume the overstayed fraction. The grave of rock multiplies what has been confided to it, or to any graves. The corpses rise, the gashes heal, the fastenings roll away. I troop forth, replenished with supreme power, one of an average, unending procession. We walk the roads of Ohio and Massachusetts and Virginia and Wisconsin, and New York, and New Orleans, and Texas, and Montreal, and San Francisco, and Charleston, and Savannah, and Mexico. Inland, and by the sea coast, and boundary lines, and we pass the boundary lines, our swift ordinances are on their way over the whole earth. The blossoms we wear in our hats are the growth of 2,000 years. Elves, I salute you. I see the approach of your numberless gangs. I see you understand yourselves and me, and know that they who have eyes are divine, and the blind and lame are equally divine, and that my step drags behind yours, yet go before them, and are aware how I am with you no more than I am with everybody. 39. The friendly and flowing savage, who is he? 
Is he waiting for civilization or past it and mastering it? Is he some Southwesterner raised outdoors? Is he Canadian? Is he from the Mississippi country or from Iowa, Oregon, or California? Or from the mountain or prairie life or brush life or from the sea? Wherever he goes, men and women accept and desire him. They desire he should like them and touch them and speak to them and stay with them. Behavior lawless as snowflakes, words simple as grass, uncombed head and laughter and navte, slow stepping feet and the common features and the common modes and emanations. They descend in new forms from the tips of his fingers. They are wafted with the odor of his body or breath. They fly out of the glance of his eyes. 40. Flaunt of the sunshine, I need not your bask. Lie over, you light surfaces only. I force the surfaces and the depths also. Earth, you seem to look for something at my hands. Say, old top knot, what do you want? <laughs> Man or woman, I might tell how I like you, but cannot. I might tell what is in me and what is in you, but cannot. And might tell the pinings I have, the pulse of my nights and days. Behold, I do not give lectures or a little charity. What I give, I give out of myself. You there, impotent, Loosen the knees, open your scarf chops till I blow grit within you. Spread your palms and lift the flaps of your pockets. I am not to be denied, I compel. I have stores plenty and to spare, and anything I have, I bestow. And do not ask who you are, that is not important to me. You can do nothing and be nothing, but what I will enfold you. To a drudge of the cotton fields or an emptier of privies, I lean. On the right cheek, I put the family kiss. And in my soul, I swear, I never will deny him. On women fit for conception, I start bigger and nimbler babes. This day, I am jetting the stuff of far more arrogant republics. To anyone dying, thither I speed and twist the knob of the door, turn the bedclothes towards the foot of the bed, let the physician and priest go home. I seize the descending man. I raise him with resistless will. O oh, despairer, here is my neck. By God, you shall not go down. Hang your whole weight upon me. I dilate you with tremendous breath. I buoy you up. Every room of the house do I fill with armed force, lovers of me, bafflers of graves, sleep. I and they keep guard all night. Not doubt, not decrease shall dare to lay a finger upon you. I have embraced you, henceforth possess you to myself. And when you rise in the morning, you will find what I tell you is so. 41. I am he bringing help for the sick as they pant on their backs, and for strong, upright men I bring yet more needed help. I heard what was said of the universe. I heard it and heard of several thousand years. It is middling well as far as it goes, but is that all? Magnifying and applying come I, outbidding at the start the old cautious hucksters the most they offer for mankind and eternity, less than a spirit of my own seminal wet, taking myself the exact dimensions of Jehovah and laying them away, lithographing Kronos and Zeus, his son, and Hercules, his grandson, buying drafts of Osiris and Isis and Belus and Brahma and Adonai, in my portfolio, placing Manito, Luce, and Allah on a leaf, and the crucifix engraved with Odin, and the hideous-faced Mexitli, and all the idols and images, 
honestly taking them all for what they are worth and not a cent more, admitting they were alive and did the work for their day, admitting they bore mites as for unfledged birds who have now to rise and fly and sing for themselves, accepting the rough deific sketches to fill out better in myself, bestowing them freely on each man and woman I see, discovering as much or more in a framer framing a house, putting higher claims for him there with his rolled up sleeves, driving the mallet and chisel, not objecting to special revelations, considering a curl of smoke or a hair on the back of my hand as curious as any revelation. Those a hold of fire engines and hook and ladder ropes more to me than the gods of the antique wars, minding their voices peal through the crash of destruction, their brawny limbs passing safe over charred lads, their white foreheads whole and unhurt out of the flames, by the mechanic's wife with her babe at her nipple interceding for every person born, three sides that harvest whizzing in a row from three lusty angels with shirts bagged out at their waist. The snag-toothed hostler with red hair redeeming sins past and to come, selling all he possesses and traveling on foot to fee lawyers for his brother and sit by him while he is tried for forgery. What was strewn in the amplest strewing the square rod about me and not filling the square rod then the bull and the bug never worshipped half enough. Dung and dirt more admirable than was dreamed. The supernatural of no account. Myself, waiting my time to be one of the Supremes. The day getting ready for me when I shall do as much good as the best and be as prodigious. Guessing when I am in it, excuse me, guessing when I am it, it will not trickle, tickle me much to receive puffs out of the pulpit or print by my life lumps, becoming already a creator, putting myself here and now to the ambushed womb of the shadows. 42, a call in the midst of the crowd, my own voice, orotin, sweeping and final. Come, my children, come, my boys and girls and my women and household, and intimates, now the performer launches his nerve. He has passed his preludes on the reeds within easily written loose-fingered chords. I feel the thrum of their climax and close. My head evolves on my neck, music rolls, but not from the organ. Folks are around me, but they are no household of mine. Ever the hard and unsunk ground, ever the eaters and drinkers, ever the upward and downward sun, ever the air and ceaseless tides, ever myself and my neighbors, refreshing and wicked and real, ever the old inexplicable query, ever that thorn thumb, that breath of itches and thirsts, ever the vexers hoot, hoot, till we find where the sly one hides and bring him forth, ever love, ever the sobbing liquid of life, ever the bandage under the chin, ever the trestles of death. Here and there, with dimes on the eyes walking, to feed the greed of the belly, the brains liberally spooning, tickets buying or taking or selling, but into the feast never once going, many sweating and plowing and thrashing, and then the chaff for payment receiving, a few idly owning, and they, the wheat, continually claiming. This is the city. I am one of the citizens. Whatever interests the rest, interests me. Politics, churches, newspapers, schools, benevolent societies, improvements, banks, tariffs, steamships, factories, markets, stocks and stores and real estate and personal estate. They who piddle and patter here in collars and tailed coats, I'm aware who they are and that they are not worms or fleas. I acknowledge the duplicates of myself under all the scraped, lifted, pike-legged concealments. The weakest and shallowest is 
deathless with me. What I do and say, the same waits for them. Every thought that flounders in me, the same flounders in them. I know perfectly well my own egotism and know my omnivorous words and cannot say any less and would fetch you whoever you are flush with myself. My words are words of a questioning and to indicate reality. This printed and bound book, but the printer and the printing office boy the marriage estate and settlement, but the body and mind of the bridegroom, and also those of the bride, the panorama of the sea, but the sea itself, the well-taken photographs, but your wife or friend close and solid in your arms, the fleet of ships of the line and all the modern improvements, but the craft and pluck of the admiral, the dishes and fare and furniture, but the host and hostess and the look out of their eyes. The sky up there, yet here or next door or across the way. The saints and sages in history, but you, yourself. Sermons and creeds and theology, but the human brain and what is called reason and what is called love and what is called life. 43. I do not despise you, priests. My faith is the greatest <coughs> of faiths and the least of faiths, and closing all worship, ancient and modern, and between ancient and modern, believing I shall come again upon the earth after 5,000 years, waiting responses from oracles, honoring the gods, saluting the sun, making a fetish of the first rock or stump powwowing with sticks in the circle of Obus, helping Lalama or Brahman as he trims the lamps of the idols, dancing yet through the streets in a phallic procession, wrapped and austere in the woods, a gymnosophist drinking mead from the skullcap to Shasta and Veda's admirant, minding the Koran, walking the Teokalus, spotted with gore from the stone and knife, beating the serpent skin drum, accepting the gospels, accepting him that was crucified, knowing assuredly that he is divine, to the mass kneeling, to the Puritan's prayer rising, sitting patiently in a pew, ranting and frothing in my insane crisis, waiting deadlight till my spirit arouses me, looking forth on pavement and land and outside of pavement and land belonging to the winders of the circuit of circuits. Out of that centripetal and centrifugal gang, I turn and talk like a man leading charges before a journey. Downhearted doubters, dull and excluded, frivolous, sullen, moping, angry, affected, disheartened, atheistical, I know every one of you and know the unspoken interrogatories by experience, I know them. How the flukes splash, how they contort rapid as lightning with spasms and spouts of blood. Be at peace, bloody flukes of doubters and sullen mopers. I take my place among you as much as among any. The past is the push of you and me and all, precisely the same. And the day and night are for you and me and all. And what is yet untried and afterward is for you and me and all. I do not know what is untried and afterward, but I know it is sure and alive and sufficient. Each who passes is considered, and each who stops is considered, and not a single one can it fail. It cannot fail the young man who died and was buried. Nor, nor the, the young, young woman who died and was, was put, put by, by his side, side nor, nor the, the little, little child that peeped in at the door and then drew back and was never seen again, nor the old man who has lived without purpose and feels it with bitterness worse than gall, nor him in the poorhouse to purple by rum and the bad disordered, nor the numberless slaughtered and wrecked nor the brutish Kahul called the order of humanity, 
nor the sacks merely floating with open mouths for food to slip in, nor anything in the earth or down in the oldest graves of the earth, nor anything in the myriads of spheres, nor one of the myriads of myriads that inhabit them, nor the present, nor the least wisp that is known. 44. It is time to explain myself. Let us stand up. What is known, I strip away. I launch all men and women forward with me into the unknown. The clock indicates the moment, but what does eternity indicate? Eternity lies in bottomless reservoirs. Its buckets are rising forever and ever. They pour and they pour and they exhale away. We, we have, have thus far exhausted trillions of winters and summers. There are trillions ahead and trillions ahead of them. Births have brought us richness and variety, and other births will bring us richness and variety. I do not call one greater and one smaller. That which fills its period and place is equal to any. Were mankind murderous or jealous upon you, my brother or my sister? I am sorry for you. They are not murderous or jealous upon me. All has been gentle with me. I keep no account with lamentation. What have I to do with lamentation? I am an acme of things accomplished, and I am an encloser of things to be. My feet strike an apex of the apices of the stairs. On every step, bunches of ages and larger bunches between the steps. All below do we travel, and still I mount and mount. Rise after rise, bow the phantoms behind me. Afar down I see the huge first nothing, the vapor from the nostrils of death. I know I was even there. I waited unseen and always, and slept while God carried me through the lethargic mist, and took my time, and took no hurt from the fetid carbon. Long was I hugged close, long and long. Immense have been the preparations for me, faithful and friendly, the arms that have helped me. Cycles ferried my cradle, rowing and rowing like cheerful boatmen. From room to me, stars kept aside in their own rings. They sent influences to look after what was to hold me. Before I was born out of my mother, generations guided me. My embryo has never been torpid. Nothing could overlay it. For it the nebulae cohered to an orb, the long, slow strata piled to rest it on. Vast vegetables gave it sustenance. Monstrant sauroids transported it in their mouths and deposited it with care. All forces have been steadily employed to complete and delight me. Now I stand on this spot with my soul. Yeah. 45. Span of youth, ever pushed elasticity, manhood balanced and florid and full, my lovers suffocate me, crowding my lips and thicken the pores of my skin, jostling me through streets and public halls, coming naked to me at night, crying by day, ahoy, from the rocks of the river, swinging and chirping over my head, calling my name from flower beds or vines <coughs> or tangled underbrush, or while I swim in the bath or drink from the pump at the corner or the curtain is down at the opera, or I glimpse at a woman's face in the railroad car, lighting on every moment of my life, bussing my body with soft and balsamic buses, 
noiselessly passing handfuls out of their hearts and giving them to be mine. Old age supremely rising, ineffable grace of dying days, every condition promulges not only itself, it promulges what grows after and out of itself, and the dark hush promulges as much as any. I open my scuttle at night and see the far sprinkled systems, and all I see, multiplied as high as I can cipher, edge but the rim of the farther systems, wider and wider they spread, expanding, and always expanding outward and outward and forever outward. My son has his son and round him obediently wheels. He joins with his partners a group of superior circuits and greater sets follow, making specks of the greatest inside them. There is no stoppage, never can be stoppage. If I and you and the worlds and all beneath or upon their surfaces and all the palpable life were this moment reduced back to a pallid float, it would not avail in the long run. We would surely bring up again where we now stand and then surely go back as much further and then further and further. A few quadrillions, quadrillions of eras a few octillions of cubic leagues do not hazard the span or make it impatient. They are but parts. Anything is but a part. See ever so far. There is limitless space outside of that. Count ever so much. There is limitless time around that. Our rendezvous is fitly appointed. God will be there and wait till we come. 46. I know I have the best of time and space and that I was never measured and never will be measured. I tramp a perpetual journey. My signs are a rainproof coat and good shoes and a staff cut from the woods. No friend of mine takes his ease in my chair. I have no chair, nor church, nor philosophy. I lead no man to a dinner table or library or exchange, but each man and each woman of you, I lead upon a knoll. My left hand hooks you round the waist. My right hand points to landscapes of continents and a plain public road. Not I. Not anyone else can travel that road for you. You must travel it for yourself. It is not far. It is within reach. Perhaps you have been on it since you were born and did not know. Perhaps it is everywhere, on water and on land. Shoulder your duds, and I will mine, and let us hasten forth. Wonderful cities and free nations we shall fetch as we go. If you tire, give me both burdens, and rest the chuff of your hand on my hip, and in due time you shall repay the same service to me. For after we start, we never lie by again. This day before dawn, I ascended a hill, and I looked at the crowded heaven. And I said to my spirit, when we become the enfolders of those orbs, and the pleasure and knowledge of everything in them, Shall we be filled and satisfied then? And my spirit said, no. We level that to lift past and continue beyond. You are also asking me questions, and I hear you. I answer that I cannot answer. You must find out for yourself. Sit a while, wayfarer. Here are biscuits to eat, and here is milk to drink. But as soon as you sleep and renew yourself in sweet clothes, I will certainly kiss you with my goodbye kiss and open the gate for your egress hence. Long enough have you dreamed contemptible dreams. Now I wash the gum from your eyes. You must habit yourself to the dazzle of light and of every moment of your life. Long 
have you timidly waiting, holding a plank by the shore. Now I will you to be a bold swimmer, to jump off in the midst of the sea and rise again, and nod to me and shout, and laughingly dash with your hair. 47. I am the teacher of athletes. He that by me spreads a wider breast than my own proves the width of my own. He most honors my style, who learns under it to destroy the teacher. <laughs> the boy I love, the same becomes a man, not through derived power, but in his own right. Wicked, rather than virtuous, out of conformity or fear, fond of his sweetheart, relishing well his stake, unrequited love or a slight cutting him worse than a wound cuts. First rate to ride, to fight, to hit the bullseye, to sail a skiff, to sing a song or play on the banjo, preferring scars and faces pitted with smallpox, overall latherers and those that keep out of the sun. I teach straying from me, yet who can stray from me? I follow you, whoever you are, from the present hour. My words itch at your ears till you understand them. I do not say these things for a dollar or fill up the time while I wait for a boat. It is you talking as much as myself. I act as the tongue of you. It was tied in your mouth and mine. It begins to be loosened. I swear I will never mention love or death inside a house. And I swear I never will translate myself at all only to him or her who privately stays with me in the open air. If you would understand me, Go to the heights or water shore. The nearest gnat is an explanation and a drop or the motion of waves a key. The maul, the oar, and the handsaw second my words. No shuttered room or school can commune with me, but roughs and little children better than they. The young mechanic is closest to me. He knows me pretty well. The woodman that takes his ax and Jug with him shall take me with him all day. Mm -hmm. The farm boy plowing in the field feels good at the sound of my voice. In vessels that sail, my words must sail. I go with fishermen and seamen and love them. My face rubs to the hunter's face when he lies down alone in his blanket. The driver thinking of me does not mind the jolt of his wagon. The young mother and old mother shall comprehend me. The girl and the wife rest the needle a moment and forget where they are. They and all would resume what I have told them. 48. I have said that the soul is not more than the body. And I have said that the body is not more than the soul. And nothing, nothing not God, God is, is greater, greater to one than oneself, oneself is. is. And, and whoever walks, walks a furlong without sympathy walks to his own funeral, dressed in his, in his shroud. And, and I, or you, you pocketless of, of a dime, may purchase the picket of the earth. earth. And, and to glance with an eye, or, or show a bean in its, in its pod, confounds the learning of all times. And there is no trade or employment, but, but the young, young man following it may become a hero. And there is no object so soft, but it makes a hub for the wheeled universe. And any man or woman shall stand cool and supercilious before a million universes. And I call to mankind, be not curious about God, for I, who am curious about each, am not curious about God. No array of terms can say how much I am at peace about God and about death. I hear and behold God in every object, yet I understand God not in the least, nor do I understand who there can be more wonderful than myself. Why should I wish to see God better than this day? 
I see something of God each hour of the 24, and each moment then in the faces of men and women I see God, and in my own face in the glass. I find letters from God dropped in the street, and every one is signed by God's name, and I leave them where they are, for I know that others will punctually come forever and ever. 49. <clears throat> 49. And to you, death, you bitter bug of mortality, it is idle to try to alarm me. To his work without flinching, the accoucher comes. I see the, <clears throat> I see the elder hand pressing, receiving, supporting. I recline by the sills of the exquisite flexible doors and mark the outlet and mark the relief and escape. And to you, corpse, I think you are good manure, but that does not offend me. I smell the white roses, sweet scented and growing. I reach to the leafy lips. I reach to the polished breasts of melons. And to you, life, I reckon you are the leavings of many deaths. No doubt I have died myself 10,000 times before. I hear you whispering there, O stars of heaven, O suns, O grass of graves, O perpetual transfers and promotions. If you do not say anything, how can I say anything? of the turbid pool that lies in the autumn forest, of the moon that descends the steeps of the sowling twilight, toss sparkles of day and dusk, toss on the black stems that decay in the muck, toss to the moaning gibberish of its dry limbs. I ascend from the moon, I ascend from the night, and perceive of the ghastly glitter the sunbeams reflected, and debauch to the steady and central from the offspring, great or small. 50. There is that in me. I do not know what it is, but I know it is in me. Wrenched and sweaty, calm and cool, then my body becomes asleep. I sleep long. I do not know it. It is without name. It is a word unsaid. It is not in any dictionary or utterance or symbol. Something it swings on more than the earth I swing on. To it the creation is the friend whose embracing awakes me. Perhaps I might tell more. Outlines. I plead for my brothers and sisters. Do you see, oh my brothers and sisters, it is not chaos or death, it is form and union and plan, it is eternal life, it is happiness. 51. The past and present wilt. I have filled them and emptied them and proceed to fill my next fold of the future. Listener up there, hear you. What have you to confide to me? Look in my face while I snuff the sidle of evening. Talk honestly, for no one else hears you, and I stay only a minute longer. Do I contradict myself? Very well, then. I contradict myself. I am large. I contain <laughs> multitudes. I concentrate toward them that are nigh. I wait on the door slab. Who has done his day's work and will soonest be through with his supper? Who wishes to walk with me? Will you speak before I am gone? Or will you prove already too late? 52. The spotted hawk swoops by and accuses me. He complains of my gab and my loitering. I too am not a bit tamed. I too am untranslatable. I sound my barbaric yeah over the roofs of the world. The last scud of day holds back for me. It flings my likeness after the rest. 
and true as any on the shadowed wilds. It coaxes me to the vapor and the dusk. I depart as air. I shake my white locks at the runaway sun. I effuse my flesh in eddies and drifted in lacy jags. I bequeath myself to the dirt to grow from the grass I love. If you want me again, look for me under your boot soles. You will hardly know who I am or what I mean, but I shall be good health to you nevertheless and filter and fiber your blood. Failing to fetch me at first, keep encouraged, missing me one place, search another, I stop somewhere waiting for you. We all did it. reading together in Willits, one of the first. Oh my God, yes, I remember that. <laughs> October 1st, 1986. Oh my God, was it really now?